Hello, Bass family, and welcome to Everything Bass. So I've been getting a lot of feedback um, from players that they would like even more beginner, um, that I don't assume anything, uh, videos where um, you just bought your bass an hour ago, you just got home, you, you searched beginning bass lessons, and you, you found um, Everything Bass. I've, I've been trying to lay out in the first uh, couple months of this channel uh, foundational information is basic scales, basic arpeggios, right hand technique, left hand technique. But I realize from the comments that I've left out some things. And I'm going to try to rectify this with an ultimate beginner type um, series of videos that don't take any assumptions. So if you're a more advanced player, this video might not be for you. Uh, heck, if you're an intermediate player, it might not be for you. But if you're just starting your journey, man, let's learn about the anatomy of the bass. That's where we're at. And, and it's important because from the feedback I've been getting, I'll mention like a part of the bass and you guys aren't sure where it is. And I was there. I, I know what that's like when I had to like, you know, what, well, what is a saddle? What is all this? So I'm going to um, go through this bass and um, show you all the different parts of it. Um, I am going to have some support material on my Patreon account, which is patreon.com forward slash everything bass. And it's basically a graphic uh, of the base with the key primary uh, elements, the anatomy kind of listed out by names. Something that maybe just support it, um, but let's just do it right now. Um, so we're going to start the headstock. So this is the headstock of the base, and uh, on it we have tuning machines. Now, when I first started playing, they were called a variety of things, um, but most commonly tuners. Um, but yeah, tuning machines are here. This is a five-string base. That's why there's five of them. And, um, and this is how you tune the instrument. And you also want to be very protective of your bass overall, but make sure you just don't lean it against something and walk away. That's not secure because I commonly see these broken off where the bass falls over and the tuning, the, some people call them tuning pegs, but the tuners are easy to snap off and it's just an annoyance. You could really, you know, also do some serious damage to your bass. All right, so from there, we have the tuners on the headstock. We have this little bit here and it's called the nut. Stop giggling. Uh, the nut helps keep the strings equal spaced um, out. Uh, it's definitely a, a you know, very, very important part of your tone also. They can be made out of different things. So my bases, they're made out of metal. Some are made out of bone, some are made of graphite. Uh, there's hard plastic ones, uh, but that's called the nut. So when I refer to the nut, that's what I'm talking about. Now on the base, these metal bars, these are called frets. So these are um, how your bass, if it's a fretted bass, how the fingerboard is laid out so that all the different pitches you play are possible. Um, and on the top edge of your fingerboard, you'll see these dots. These are your fret fretboard dots. And when, I don't know if you, you probably can't see that because of the horn, but wherever there's two dots next to each other, that represents your 12th fret, which is where the, uh, the sequence of notes starts over. If you have an open E, you go up to the double dots right here, you got the E again. It repeats, but it's an octave higher. So headstock, tuners, nut, frets, uh, fretboard dots. Um, you also have the inlays, fretboard inlays. If I talk about inlays, that's these cool, like in this bass, the cool circle. Um, this again helps you visually see where you're on the bass. Now you notice like when I play my Warwick thumb bass, it doesn't have any fretboard dots. And that's why sometimes I use it and sometimes I don't, because I know that that can be hard for a bass player watching the video to see exactly what I'm doing. So I try to be judicious when I play that bass. Also, the reason I haven't been playing this bass, even though it's my main bass, uh, on the videos is the ones that deal with most foundational beginning stuff, I think it's more encouraging to be on the four string. It simplifies it. That's why I'm using my four strings. But on some videos coming up, you'll see me playing more of the five string, because this is the bass I play. Uh, mostly. So uh, what's here? These are strap buttons. Strap buttons. And the strap buttons are very cool. I, um, I actually use strap locks. Now strap locks securely fastens the strap to the to the base. You actually have to mechanically operate it to get it off. Uh, live I've been known to move around quite a bit and in my early days the strap button sometimes would come off and I didn't want to break my base. So I started investing in strap locks. So strap buttons, there's usually one on the upper horn and one on the butt end. So going into the base body, you'll, you'll even on neck throughs, like this is a neck through base. Now what is a neck through base? It's one piece of wood or multiple pieces of woods that go all the way from the top, the headstock, all the way down. 
This is neck through. There's other kinds are, are a set neck or a glue neck or a bolt-on. Bolt-on, obviously you would have bolts here because the two pieces, the body and the neck, are bolted together. Uh, the, the, the set neck, you won't see any uh, bolts because they're glued in, um, and, but it usually would show like one color wood for the neck and then the body would be different. In this case, this is a neck through. This is called the heel where the, the joint is, the, the body neck joint is. All right, so now we've got pickups. Now in this case, these pickups are represent what's called a P-style, P-base style pickup. Uh, this is actually one pickup, if you will, just split in a way um, the, the way it was designed. And then this, uh, even though it's a, it's a different shape, this would be the J pickup um, function of, of the J pickup. The knobs, it's gonna be different for every base. And luckily with the internet, it's so simple to contact the manufacturer, just do a little searching and you can figure out what each knob does. Sometimes they have mini switches. Um, this is a coil tap for this pickup, um, which again, gives me different sounds, allows me to use the base in different ways. All right, now this is the bridge. The bridge has these saddles. The saddle is where the part that the string actually goes and locks into, if you will. It's a notch. That little piece is called the saddle. So if I refer to a saddle on the bridge, it's that particular piece. Um, and there are a lot of different bridges. This is, uh, this is one style, but as you can see on some of the other bases I use, there's a variety of different styles. Um, and then on the back, uh, now sometimes this is on the front of the base, but you'll have a control panel access. Now in this case, it's on the back, but I've had some bases where the control panel was uh, here and you'd have to unscrew, take it off, and you could get access to the pots inside. If you're not experienced with working on bases or any kind of electronics, you may want to let that, leave that to professionals. Um, also, this is an active base. The, the preamp requires a pickup or a battery. Sorry, preamp requires a battery. So this is my battery uh, access. On the Warwicks I play, it's in this actual ca cavity. I, it's not separate, but I love the fact that Marushi's it's here and, um, and a lot of other bases. It's easy to get to, not having to, to take this off. Uh, so those are kind of your parts of the base. And I know that what was confusing players is I was mentioning uh, tuners or the nut, the bridge. And guys uh, might not have known what that was, and that's a stumbling block for them to getting the most out of that lesson. So here we have the anatomy of a base. Um, there's so many bases. Like you guys might say, hey, you forgot to talk about this because it wasn't on this base. Yeah, absolutely. Some bases have you know whammy bars, some call them tremolo bars. Um, other bases are, are passive only and just have one knob or things like that. So there's a lot of variety. What's great is just find out who made the base, go to that company's website, and I'm sure you can get more information from um, just by perusing that. So I hope this gives you a better understanding of the different parts of the base and will help you well, as I'm talking in lesson videos, you, know, you won't get stuck up on not knowing what I was mentioning. Uh, but I also wanna really emphasize the point that when I was starting off, I was caught up on that. I, was, I didn't understand some of the parts of the base. I didn't understand the function. Um, so uh, I really get it and, you know, I'm not, I definitely am empathetic to um, this oversight. So I'm correcting it now, anatomy of base, this video. Now, I thought it was kind of cool. If you watch this video, the encore item is, and I have to lift with my knees because it's so heavy, is Getty Lee, big, beautiful book of base. What an amazing thing. Well, first of all, it's great to go along with this video because I've been talking about the parts of the base. And this book is an amazing book that goes through Getty's collection and shows you tons of different kinds. Like here's a, a different kind of bridge that was made at one point. It, you'll understand the history of the base and how it's been involved and what, what has gone through. It's a gorgeous book. He's invested a lot of money into making this because uh, the photos are all just phenomenal. And um, I think it will help you have a better understanding of the history of our great instrument. It's not actually a very long history. The electric bass hasn't been out as long as a lot of other instruments. Um, so it's a good point for you to actually pick up this book and actually go through and learn like, you know, what different basses are, what's a Rickenbacker bass, you know, what's a fretless bass, what's a five string bass, six string bass, all these different things you can see through here, different manufacturers, get to know Fender, get to know Gibson, um, all these different things that can fill in some blanks, give you a fuller understanding of the, the world of bass, um, which is good for anybody.
I don't think anyone could ever say that they became a worse bass player because they learned more about the instrument they play. I just don't think that can exist. Uh, and it's honestly just fun. It's a really great read. I love this book. So uh, Anatomy of the Bass, remember there is, if you're a Patreon subscriber, there is a, a little reminder cheat sheet you can, you can print out, um, which shows a bass with the, all the parts on the front of the bass at least, um, kind of listed out. And uh, of course, check out Getty Lee's Big Beautiful Book of Bass. Awesome, I just love this. Uh, thank you again, but I also want to ask you for a favor. Have I missed other things? Uh, what other basic foundational exercises could I give you? Um, before you, add, you know, put in a request, why don't you just actually go to my YouTube channel and look at the entire list of videos and see if there's there. You'll see I have a plucking hand for beginning how to play with two fingers. Um, I am in talks with getting a guy who's one of the best pick players I know to maybe do a lesson on how to play with a pick. Um, but what else is there? Can I do more to show you about the anatomy of the bass? Can we fill in this basics and um, in a more complete way so it's a complete understanding? I would love your input. And, um, and it's, it's a big job. When I shoot, uh, create the shoot list for every weekend, what videos I'm gonna shoot, I'm trying to cover like more advanced, more intermediate, more beginning, and I'm sure I've forgotten some things. So if you can, you know, fill in the blanks, let me know where I should be focusing my efforts. I would really appreciate that. So as always, if you feel so inclined, um, if you want to make me happy, then hit the like, share, and subscribe. Uh, hit the little bell icon so you'll be notified every time I post a new video. And join the family in a deeper way if you want to support the channel, see what it can um, help grow. Uh, go to patreon.com forward slash everything base. Become a backstage pass um, subscribing member. You'll get access to all my lesson materials for every video I post and some additional spoofs, uh, spiffs coming up. Not spoofs, huh? <laughs> that's funny. All right, guys, this is the last video I'm shot for the day. My mind's kind of mashed potatoes right now and I am going to bid you a fond adieu and go read my book. Thank you so much. I'll talk to you later.